What's going on guys? Welcome back to Motor Gear TV and I hope everyone's having a really good new year. Now, back to the bike build series. I know it's been a while, but finally we have an update for you guys. We haven't done anything to the bike, so don't worry. Nothing has changed, but I feel like in this video we can kind of get you guys up to speed, show you a few of the parts that we've been gathering over the few weeks that we've you know paused on this series and hopefully kind of get back into the flow and me and kirk we have been kind of working on a bunch of different products so we haven't really had a lot of time to really focus on the series but now it's 2021 so we really want to kick it off and you know get it going so we can finalize this project and move on to the next thing so let's go So before we go on to showing you guys some of the parts, uh, I can kind of go over the back again so you can see pretty much where we left off. As you can see, nothing has really changed. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is a 2009 Yamaha R1. Bought it crashed. Uh, the damage was relatively light for most uh, motorcycle crashes. There are just a few cosmetic parts and a few mechanical pieces that we're going to have to change. But overall, this is pretty much how we got the bike as you can see nothing has really changed we're still needing to address all the parts that we covered in the second video that we made for the series so today hopefully we're going to install some of the parts that we've got in the mail and possibly take it on a test ride so let's go all right so i went ahead and laid all the parts out on the floor so you can see i'll go over each one of them one by one so you can see exactly what we've got so far there goes kirk <laughs> so kirk is probably going to help me with some of these stuff because you know i'm holding a camera so it might be a little bit difficult so from the left we have a replacement brake rotor for the right side of the bike uh the one that's on there is slightly bent so we definitely needed to get one of these to replace that one moving on we have the front uh upper fairing stay as you can see the one that's on the bike is broken off so we definitely need to replace that now for those of you that are new to the channel uh, we did go over all the damages to the bike in our previous video so you might want to check that out and we kind of cover everything that we plan to replace and all the things that were broken and moving on from there we have the gauge cluster and headlight harness um, this is from a 2014 the bike is a 2009 but the harnesses are interchangeable so we just decided to pick up one from a 14 and then below that is the gauge cluster now this is a pretty important uh, piece of the bike because when the upper stay snapped off the gauge cluster went with it so we needed to get one that we could replace onto the bike now we got lucky with this cluster because it's very close to the mileage or the last recorded mileage that was on the bike so everything will be pretty much as it was before the crash so that's always good and then moving on from there uh, we have some replacement levers now these aren't going to stay on the bike permanently these are just temporary so we can get the bike moving because as you can see the clutch lever uh, snapped off so we just needed something to put on the bike that we can move it around now these actually came from kirk's previous r1 build uh, you can see a picture of that here uh, that bike turned out pretty good so these levers were from that build so we figured why not we'll throw them on and then switch them out to something nicer in the future now when we were looking for a replacement harness for the bike it was pretty hard to find one that was in good condition because a lot of them they had either wires missing or plugs torn off um, this one was the closest one that we could find that had most of the plugs intact it only has one small issue right here this plug this plug is slightly damaged so we're gonna have to replace that um, lucky for us we do have a donor plug that we're going to be using so we'll swap that over and get that going next up we have some replacement fork seals and over here we have a replacement horn the one on the bike is missing right here so this should be a pretty easy swap and over here we have a oem heat shield um, this also came from kirk's previous r1 build so we'll be putting that on as well now to a few of the big parts uh, we have two parts over here um, we can go ahead and unbox some of these to show you guys. Kirk, if you could hold the camera. All right, so this is going to be our replacement radiator. As we mentioned again in the previous video, uh, one of the tabs for the radiator 
broke off and also the fan was bent so we just decided to get a replacement so this should be a pretty easy swap and we can get that going so i'll put this up next we have a pretty important piece that's gonna make this build pretty much go to the next level so i can pull it out now we have a headlight from a 2012 to 14 facelift so the difference is it has these led strips and overall to me it just looks like a more aggressive design for these bikes it definitely gives it a more modern look and we will be doing the 2012 and up facelift conversion on this bike i'm curious to see what that would look like in the end but i really think it will look great all right so i'm gonna have kurt do the honors and show you guys the final piece that we have pretty good condition we will probably have to clean these up a bit but on one of them I think which one was it I want to say it was this one the uh, fork seal is leaking so we're gonna have to do a swap on that uh, show you guys those parts a few minutes ago now before we went ahead and ordered the forks we did weigh a bunch of options in terms of do we rebuild them? Do we buy replacements? Do we go new? And ultimately it came down to just buying some good used ones online. I felt like that was the better route to go for this project. Now they are perfect as I said so we will have to service them and change the fluids. To me it will make things a little bit more interesting and also help you guys that may not be as mechanically inclined as us tackle on a project like this because not everybody has access to certain tools to do the type of servicing that these forks would have needed so i definitely think that was the best choice all right so happy what mark was able to explain all of that uh, right now we're going to get things started i'm setting up a couple of the parts that we wanted to put on the bike just to at least get it running step right into that process right now once again guys if you guys are new to the channel make sure you smash the like button give us a thumbs up and let's get the process started So now the first step in the process, so we're going to be doing, we're going to try and take off the wheel. Once we're done with that, we're going to be replacing the rotor, as you guys can see right here. And then after that, we're going to move the, to the front fairing state and then also the front forks. So this have Mark trying to get it out right now. So we're just trying to get the front axle out. Uh, it's a little bit tight in there because the way the forks twisted it's putting a lot of friction on it So I can't get enough force to press it out. So I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and a rubber mallet to try to push it out All right, you don't want to go too far Because once it comes out the wheel is going to drop so you can try to support the wheel with your hand All 
and it actually came off. So even here you can see that this piece broke off in the crash. But luckily for us, the bolts are still there, so we'll be able to reuse them. Alright, so right now we're going to replace the levers. To take them off is pretty easy. It's actually held in by two what, two screws. Yeah. And both on the side and on the back. We're going to unscrew those screws and also the clutch cable. So we're done with that. I'm just going to put the levers on. And these temporary levers, um, they're ASV. Yeah, these levers right here are ASV. Pretty good quality. As Mark mentioned, they were on my old R1 so I was going to be putting them on until we get our new levels and we'll be we'll be talking a little bit more about those parts in upcoming videos So got the levers all set up, both sides, looking pretty good. Um, next up, we're going to be heading um, to replace the rotor. So right now we're just going to unscrew these bolts right here and then get a new one seated in. Now for the 09-14R1, uh, the rotors are side specific. Now to tell which direction they should spin in, you'll see an arrow pointing in the correct direction. Now this is the right side, so the bike will be spinning in this direction so that way you know it's facing the right way. On the back, it will look like this. So it's kind of hard to put it on wrong. I'm just gonna clean off the wheel before I install. It's a little bit easier to do all of this once it's off the wheel. So before you install the bolts, you want to just clean them off with a paper towel and then apply some blue thread lock. Uh, this is going to help keep the bolts from backing out. You don't want to do too much, just a small dab is all you need. And then just screw them in. Untighten first so you don't cross thread. And then just do the same thing for the rest. Now to tighten down, you just want to go in a crisscross pattern. So you're just gonna sung them up, go across. And to finalize, you wanna go ahead and grab your torque wrench and just torque them to 13 foot pounds. And you're gonna follow the same crisscross pattern. This so one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. And just like that, the front wheel is pretty much ready to go on the bike. But I think we're actually gonna stop there because um, before we put this on, we're gonna want to go ahead and swap out the forks. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for the next episode. We're gonna do the forks and tighten up a few things and potentially do a first ride. So you don't want to miss that. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap up this video. I wanna thank you guys again for following us on this journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And leave some comments down below. Let us know if you're liking the process so far and what else you want to see from this series. All right, guys, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then.